All right, in this example, I'm going to do another, another problem of subtracting rational expressions and simplifying and combining. And again, the tedious thing about, about combining rational expressions is that you have to get common denominators. Um, so again, the first thing that I do is I always try to factor the denominators if possible. So x squared plus 5x plus 4. Again, in this case, I think we need so an x and an x to get x squared. We need two numbers that multiply to positive 4 but add up to positive 5. I think positive 4 and positive 1 will do that. And then we have 3 divided by, okay, so x squared minus 1. That's just a difference of perfect squares. So that factors as, we'll make the first one x plus 1 and x minus 1. Okay, so now comes the step of getting the, the common denominators. So I'm going to rewrite it uh, one more time and give myself a little bit of space just because I know that I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to change things a little bit. Okay, so then, okay, so what do we do? So typically when I do this, the way I think about it is, I look at my first fraction, I look at its denominator. I see, well, there's an x plus 4 factor, and there's an x plus 1 factor. In the other fraction, I see that there's an x plus 1 factor and an x minus 1 factor. Anything that this other fraction, any factors that are in the denominator of our second fraction that are not present in the first fraction, we're going to have to include those. Okay, so what do I mean? It? I look at my x plus 1 and I say, well, the first fraction has an x plus 1, so I don't need to, to somehow introduce that. But then I look at the x minus 1, and notice there's no x minus 1 in my first fraction. So what that means is, to get a common denominator, I'm going to multiply top and bottom of my first fraction by x minus 1. And then uh, once you do this with one of the fractions, notice there's no other factors um, that, are, that are present in the second fraction. This is going to be our common denominator, x plus 4, x plus 1, x minus 1. So what that means is, I do the same thing for my second fraction. Well, there's an x plus 1 in my first fraction. Well, my second fraction already has it. The x minus 1 is there because we threw it in, but notice the first fraction has an x plus 4 that the second fraction doesn't. So we have to multiply top and bottom by x plus 4. So it sounds a little tedious, but again, the basic idea to me is you multiply by what's missing, in a sense. That's kind of what I think to myself. Okay, so now we have to do a little bit of simplification. Again, the, arith the arithmetic happens in the numerator. So we have 2 times the quantity x minus 1 minus, you could think about that as being negative 3, x plus 4. <clears throat> we could also simplify down the denominator. We could multiply it out. Um, let's do it, why not, just for fun, because it is so much fun. Um, gives you a little bit of algebra practice. Make sure you're, you know, make sure you're doing everything okay. All right, so a couple more steps here in terms of the simplification. Let me give myself a little bit more room here. Okay, so in the numerator, if you multiply this out, we'll have to distribute. So we'll get 2 times x, which will be 2x. We'll get 2 times negative 1, will be negative 2. Then we have negative 3 times x, which is negative 3x. And then we have negative 3 times positive 4, which is going to give us a negative 12. Okay, in the denominator, um, again, we either have to multiply you know, the first factor by the second factor, or the first factor by the third, or the second by the third. We can multiply them in any order we want, right? It's multiplication. So to me, I'm going to actually multiply the x plus 1 and the x minus 1 because I think just algebraically that's kind of easier to do. I know it's a difference of perfect squares and things will work out a little bit easier. Again, you don't have to. I know what x plus 1 times x minus 1 is. It's just x squared minus 1. I mean, we factored x squared minus 1 to get that in the first place uh, at the very beginning of the problem. An anyway, so, okay, so in the numerator now, we can simplify down. It looks like we have 2x minus 3x. That would give us negative 1x. We have negative 2 minus 12. That'll be negative 14. And now in the denominator, we would have to distribute things out. So x times x squared would give us x cubed. 
we would have x times negative 1, which is negative 1x. Positive 4 and x squared is positive 4x squared. And then positive 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And I'm going to do one last thing, which is simply to rewrite the denominator in descending order. So x cubed, I'm going to write my positive 4x squared next. We've got negative 1x. And then we have minus 4 left over. And we would now consider that simplified. Again, we took our two separate fractions, and we've been able to combine them as a single fraction.